All right, we are live whenever you guys are ready. Awesome. Um, hello, uh, my name is Jacqueline or JQ. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a senior at DePaul studying creative producing. Hi there, I'm, I'm Nick Schmidt. I'm staff here at DePaul. Um, I run the production office with Sandy Gordon um, and Fran Casillas. Hello, I'm Frank Casillas. I work at the student production office. I'm a student. Awesome. And today we're just going to kind of go over how to navigate the production office at DePaul and um, things to know, the do's and don'ts. Um, all right, so we can get this started. Um, this is just an overview of the things that we'll be talking about today. Um, so first we'll go over like some the orientation on D2L and the production handbook casting crew calls, um, how to get a project approved so you can like make reservations and um, uh, get everything good to go to use DePaul's equipment and facilities. So that includes the gear, group truck, um, different things that's in the space. And the web checkout patron portal is how all those reservations are made. So we'll go through that. Um, and then into locations. So whether you're on or off campus, there are different protocols. And then finally, cast and crew contracts um, that DePaul provides, but also outside of that. Um, so first, just as a disclaimer, this presentation does not exempt you from reading the newly updated production handbook. Um, this can be found on the SCA Central page on D2L. And it also doesn't exempt you from completing the SCA orientation. These are both like, really helpful resources. Um, and that's where all this information in this presentation is coming from. Um, so this is just like an overview of all that information. So do make sure to check those out as um, they're super important. All right, so at Paul, you're a DePaul student, you have a script and some crew and you wanna get your project started. Um, what do you do now? First thing that you'll want to get started with are some casting sessions and DePaul has some resources through the production office that are really helpful that I've used before as a student producer. Um, my favorite one for as far as getting casting calls up and getting information out to Chicago actors about projects I'm working on is definitely backstage.com and basically it's just a website where you can post your project and you can get um, you can post a casting call and get people to come to auditions um, it's really easy to use and the production office actually provides a code for a free membership and that's the code seen here DePaul film um, I think it's a really awesome resource and definitely something you should take advantage of um, while we have that free membership here. Another resource similar to that is Breakdown Express. Um, so again, it's just a way to get your information out to Chicago actors and talent um, and get your uh, casting call ready to go in auditions and callbacks and things like that. Um, and then you may be wondering, like, we will we have this theater school, like, what if I want, like, um, people from there to be in my film, like, really keep it in house as far as your production. So there is a specific way to go through that. Um, you have to post a casting call through the production office, and then they contact the theater school for you. Um, and there's some required elements of your casting call. Um, that are listed on the production office's web page in the CDM website. Um, so do make sure to check that out while you're, before you send that casting call over. Um, and overall, in a normal year, you'd be able to resume, reserve, loop, or LPC spaces to hold these auditions and casting calls and callbacks. Um, but over Zoom works just fine for now, just because those spaces are closed for the fall quarter and the availability is kind of different. Um, Nick or Fran, do you have anything to add to this? Um, yeah, I'll add something um, about Breakdown Express too. I know people are using Backstage. Um, I have used Breakdown Express more, but um, um, that's not to say it's better. But anyway, about that, it's I kind of liken it to a, a Craigslist where actors will subscribe to this site and they will then see your breakdowns. Um, and then we'll submit their headshots um, if they're interested in that specific project. So 
Um, you just have to create an account. It's free. Um, and then I think it's a good way to, uh, to post, um, yeah, to, to, to help your casting, um, opposed to sort of cold calling or looking for, um, headshots or even videos of people, because this way they can actually, the, the actors can actually see your uh, project and, you know, and decide if they're interested or not. Um, one other thing that we do provide or that we're going to start to provide here very soon, hopefully this week, is uh, Fran has, along with the production office, has um, probably gotten 200, maybe 300 different actors to come in throughout the past year, and they've done monologues. And Fran has taped those and put them up on a... Um, a website that you can see the videos and then you can see headshots. So that website should go up live here um, probably this week. We're just working out some kinks where you're actually sign in through with your Campus Connect credentials and be able to see these. And then if you're interested, you could you could contact these actors. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I got on that. Uh, one thing to mention, uh, on Breakdown Express, uh, Different from backstage, you just create your account and you're good to go. Breakna Express, you need a valid ID, uh, and they're going to request you to send that ID, and they're going to verify your identity, and they'll give you a call. And once you're screened through, they'll make an account for you, uh, and that's how you get into it. It's not as uh, friendly as backstage, but, but this screening process, but it, as long as, as you have a valid state ID, it should be fine. And then I'll one. And then my experience with breakdown is the people that call you are actually very helpful. So in my experience, they have been so. Um, but both of those are good resources. Awesome. All right. Um, so now you might have some talent that you casted from these casting sessions and you have some your crew ready to go, your script ready to go, um, and now you need to get it approved by DePaul so you can start shooting and start working on your project. Um, so this first form is the project information form and it's something that needs to be filled out in order to reserve DePaul equipment and facilities and just overall like get it approved by the production office. Um, so here's a, um, on this slide, there's just like a list of what you need to know in order to fill this out. Um, so you do need to like have a whole description of your production. You need to have your principal crew members. So like your director, producer, um, director of photography, uh, different people like that, just, um, like so the production office can get it approved and you also would need a faculty approval or signature depending on what the type of project is um so if it's for like extra credit or it's for actually for a class you'll need them to get it signed off as well um from the i guess production office standpoint is there anything that like you see come up as far as like people turning this in that might be like wrong or like misconceptions or anything uh i guess there's been a couple of people that for class projects have submitted this form and i'm like no no if it's for class uh then you're good you can get equipment for your class project this is more for when you want to do something that is not directly related to a course then you go through this process Matt. Matt was really the reason for that is is insurance is the main reason for that so the call because um your depaul students and using depaul's gear if we can somehow tie it and say it's a depaul project um depaul's insurance will kick in if anything were to happen so if it's a class project that's DePaul related, so you don't necessarily have to go through this. But if some people have created um, projects um, outside and that they're doing with DePaul students here, and um, they can tie it to a class and make an extra credit, that's a way to say it's DePaul related or, um, or it's a grant um, that they've gotten. Um, but essentially it tying it through the production office is to make sure that there's insurance and make sure people are covered. And if not, um, we can kind of help steer you 
the right way. So it's always important to come come through us and ask us questions. And then um, I'd also say too, people sometimes don't fill out everything or say, hey, I didn't fill it out because I didn't know, you know, my crew wasn't all set in stone. Um, that is okay. You can still submit this stuff with just as much information as you have, and then we can keep talking. So I think it's, uh, and then essentially what the production office does from there is make you aware of anything that you might need to be aware of, like locations. Hey, you might need um, insurance for this location, and here's the steps to do that. Or I see you have a child actor working here. Like here's some steps to work with child actors. Um, or here's stunts, or here's a, a weapon, here's what you would need to do to make that safe and, um, and actually be able to happen and be covered for insurance. So um, I'd say the sooner you get it to us, the better. Um, it does actually ask for seven days prior to it. Um, and so I guess that's, I should be clear on that, that, you know, if it's, if it's less than that, um, your project is in jeopardy of not, you know, happening on time. So, um, so use that. Definitely. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this like scary thing. I know like sometimes yeah. I like I'm daunted by or whatever, but I know that you all are here to help out, which is nice. Absolutely. Um, so in addition, um, to this project in from, in addition to this project information form, you need to submit what is called a production packet. Um, so this here um, is everything that's included in this production packet. So as you can see, the first thing is this project information form. Um, but then in addition, you just need to submit these supplemental materials so the production office can like know more about your project and like um, have a better idea. So. Yeah, I can just go through the list like you'll need like a script or a treatment if it's like a music video and you don't necessarily have like dialogue or things you do need like you still need some kind of like this is what's happening in our project, even if it's not specifically a script with dialogue. Um, you need an expected production schedule and budget. You need um, meal and crafty plans, especially considering COVID safety guidelines that are implemented right now, um, a locations list equipment list, casting plans, whether you plan to work with union or non-union talent, um, as well as contracts and for like cast and crew, those need to be submitted, um, as well as final file deliverable specifications. So this is just to ensure that um, like you do have a plan for post-production and it's important to be thinking ahead about that. So that um, that's why they included the those specifications. And then finally, just a COVID safety plan in regard to the guidelines that are now implemented in the production handbook, which we'll go through a little bit later in this presentation, but um, it's also an important thing to keep in mind. And then in addition, um, if applicable, you'll also wanna submit a group truck request form um, for any like gear, as well as any details of anything that might present safety concerns. So stunts, weapons, water scenes, or working with minors. And then if you, this is a non-class, totally independent project, you'll need proof of insurance as then you wouldn't be covered by DePaul's insurance. Um, mm -hmm. So just wanna make sure that you- Oh, are you in class right now? I am uh, running a workshop right now. Oh my God. Totally let um, you go. Is there anything more, I guess, like missing from this list or like anything call. you both, I mean, like, like, I, uh, have any pointers about? I can't take I this whole code right now. I was going to be like, maybe I could. No, I'm literally people, like. <laughs> um, a lot of times, so proof of insurance. I'm willing to go. Um, okay. so I just played my first rarely, ever Bubble uh, Zoom day, so I'm no. just going to tell you about that. I don't know that I can actually point to it. Later? Okay. Sense where a student has okay, I'm excited. Let's talk later. Enjoy your, your big project and it has Thank you. nothing to do with the part. Bye. It's Bye. Not Bye. Credit. It's not a grant. Um, no teacher has backed this project. If that's the case, DePaul does own this equipment. And if you're a DePaul student, they will, in specific instances, allow you to use their equipment. But um, you would have to prove, uh, provide proof of liability insurance. So you would go to an outside vendor. And so we have some vendors that we could 
I don't know if recommend or just say that, hey, these people actually provide that insurance. And so then people are like, well, how, you know, how much does that cost? Um, I'd say roughly $500, depending on the project and, and the amount of time um, you would need the insurance for. But so I think that number then, you know, scares people off. It's like, well, um, you know, I don't want to pay that much money for this insurance. So then it's another reason to somehow tie it to DePaul. And the production office, if you have questions about that, the production office can at least give you all the options that you might be able to do. Um, so and then if you tie it to DePaul, mm -hmm. essentially, then you would not have to get insurance. Um, you know, DePaul's insurance would kick in. And so that's what the production office is here to do to uh, to make sure that, that uh, you know, that uh, you're safe and, and insured. It's very important. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, so we have um, a question about getting approved for an independent project. Um, kind of, you know, I know you guys don't handle equipment, but it was a little about equipment, a little about the PO. Um, is there any preference given to upperclassmen, uh, graduate students when it comes to, I guess, kind of, you know, importance of projects is there any preference given if you are a senior or above as if it's like a freshman project no uh no preference the only it's essentially it's it's a first come first serve right so if you know if two projects came in and they all wanted the same gear um it would be essentially if they both check out, it would be the first person that, that had asked for that gear. There is no preference on that. Um, that I guess what you could argue, what is preference? Um, I don't know, sometimes you have to be tested for certain cameras um, or certain equipment. So if someone is tested and someone's not, there might be, uh, you know, priority there, I guess or and um, graduate students for their thesis projects have 60 days um, and to order to request equipment where most of the time everyone else has a 30 day there's a, you can order it 30 days in advance thesis students and it's only for thesis projects not just thesis students not any project they do for their thesis project mm -hmm. they uh, they get 60 days so um, that would be it, but no, there's no, you know, if everything, all the boxes are checked and, and you have it, it's essentially first come, first serve. Perfect, thank you. Awesome, and yeah, just also like from a student perspective and like submitting these production packets before, um, if like you do have questions on anything or like anything isn't totally fleshed out or like, you maybe you forgot to attach something the production office will like let you know and like work with you on that like again it doesn't have to be this like scary thing um this definitely is a lot easier once you start talking to the production office about it yeah and even if you even if your first contact with us is hey i'm thinking about doing a project can we have a chat that's that's fine mm -hmm. and yeah this slide just like again just touches on that same idea like the production office is here to help like these are a lot of materials but um it'll be worth it in the end as you'll not only be squared away with DePaul but you'll be super prepped for your project um and ready to go um so this was mentioned in the production packet materials as you might need to specify if you have like weapons in your script or stunts or different things like that. So there are very specific things that you need to go through to get these approved by not only DePaul, but also just Chicago in general, if you're shooting um, like off campus, especially. So first is 
the use of prop weapons. Um, so there's a specific prop weapon authorization form that needs to be submitted and approved by the production office. You also need to notify like local police for your filming. And if you're on campus, you need to let public safety know as well. Um, and you'll need to obtain all needed local and city permits. So this would be through the Chicago Film Office. Um, and they have their um, super easy to work with as well. Um, so you can always reach out to them with questions on that. And also if like that you are using specific weapons or different things like that, you'll need to hire um, the needed professionals who like know how to use these specific props um, just in order to maintain a very safe environment because like you don't want any mishaps especially with like weapons on set um it's always important to be safe over anything else um and yeah th again this is pretty similar for stunts you'll need to have a form submitted and approved by the production office as well and you'll also for sure need to hire a certified stunt coordinator um also super important and then just as far as things that are just like they don't like they're not permitted by DePaul includes driving sequences and animals on set so there's no forms for that or anything it's just like a, a hard no <laughs> um personally I've never gone through this process before but I guess like I try and stay away from it just because it is mm very tedious and like if there's a way to work around it I feel like that um, is easier um, but I would I would say I agree that that it's easier to not but if it has to be um, this that shouldn't steer you away from going through this process right and so Jacqueline had mentioned that it's you know number one is, is safety here but um you know even for a gun that is obviously not a gun if it's a prop gun and you're thinking that you know, I, I don't really have to do this. This isn't going to hurt anyone. Um, I don't a, a scenario that, that could present itself unsafe is, um, you know, if someone else sees from a window or something, even if it's a prop gun, but maybe from a distance looks real, um, you know, that could pre present a, an unsafe situation where people get hurt. Um, and if people hear yelling or whatever, if police come to the scene. But um, essentially, don't let this intimidate you. There is a process to actually make, allow these types of things to happen safely. And so it's important to, um, you know, to go through this process. And if you have questions about it or it's intimidating, even working with the film office, that's what the production office is here to help you do. Awesome. We have a quick question <clears throat> about animals. Um, basically, is it allowed if it's like my dog? It's a good question. The um, it's kind of a new rule. Um, the it clearly says no animals. Um, so my answer will be to to act, to present the case to you know instead of taking hypotheticals I guess let's uh, present it to the production office um, ask and uh, and we'll do the proper um, you know go up the the chain and, and ask to see if that's okay um, so I would say no it's not okay but ask us and and we'll go from there. Great, thank you. All right. Um, and these are just a couple of things to keep in mind as far as if you're looking to, so you have this packet and different things like that. Um, this not only applies to the production office, but also applies to Cinespace and like reserving equipment and facilities there. Um, so I just wanted to touch on the process at Cinespace a little bit. Um, so you just to keep in mind, um, you can reserve Cinespace equipment and save just up to 30 days in advance um, of your like first day of filming or shooting. So if you the earlier you get like this production packet and project information form ready to go, like the sooner you'll be able to reserve things. Um, also to keep in mind, Nick touched on this as well, but just um, having all 
your crew uh, certified and ready to go on the advanced equipment if you're looking to rent out specific cameras or gear. So included included in that are all dollies, yeah, advanced camera lighting or grip gear, mobile sound cards, DIT cards, and TriCasters are all require special certification. Um, so definitely reach out to Cineface if you have questions about that. I know that there are also like specific classes, like courses you can take through DePaul that get you that advanced camera certification and different things like that. And also addition um, is the group truck certification. Um, so right now the group truck is not available to rent out um, just because of COVID, but in a normal year, uh, the form can be found on CDM Cinespace homepage if you're looking to get that reserved. And it also requires a non-CDL class C driver's license. So the person who would be renting that out would also have to obtain that through um, Illinois. Um, so again, I just wanted to touch on like Cinespace protocols and different things like that. So the web checkout patron portal that I mentioned, this is just like a, I guess, like hub for any kind of reservations at Cinespace or at the cage. Um, you can also reserve specific rooms or facilities from it. Um, so you log in with your Campus Connect credentials. Um, the link is on the SCA D2L homepage. Um, and from there, you can choose which equipment center you want to check out from, whether it be, like I said, the cage, sin space, um, and they all do have different procedures and contact info. So on the right um, is what shows up if you are looking to reserve at sin space. So there are like specific things that you need to follow within there. And then for checking um, gear out and to make reservations you need to have a signature on file so this is tied directly to the production handbook so th on the last page there's like this um, form that says like I um, read through the production handbook I understand everything and you sign it and you have to submit that to a space to be able to reserve you also need to complete the orientation but the major majority of time this is completed in class like in um, production one so um, also keeping that in mind but yeah, other than that, like using the software is pretty easy. You just like add things to like your cart and then you're able to reserve it following this protocol on the right. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy once you like, if you read through the production handbook, especially it walks you through all of this. It's kind of confusing if you don't, which is why it's important to read through that handbook as well. And so I kind of just went through that as if, um, it was like more of a normal year, but these are some of the COVID safety protocols that are implemented right now that have to do with like Cinespace and productions in general. Um, this is all outlined in the handbook as well. Um, so as of right now, for Cinespace, all in like any equipment center, all rentals have to be made online. So you do have to use the patron portal. You can't just like walk up and ask for a reservation. There's also a specific protocol um, for picking up and dropping off equipment. Um, so in this space, I reached out to them and they um, specified that it is important to look those things over. It's things like making sure you're wearing a mask, making sure you're showing up at your specified time window, because they do have specific 15 minute windows for each people who come to pick up equipment. So like people aren't like seeing each other as far as that goes. Um, and right now, during the stages, the group truck, advanced dollies, walkies, and certain craft service items are not available for reservations this fall. Um, and overall, I, we mentioned this for the production packet, but you do need to have a COVID safety plan and like an appointed crew member who oversees all of this. It's super important. So there's like certain specifications for the size of crew, how you're like, shooting format is laid out so there's like hubs that you need like people to be in each department um every all food needs to be individually packaged and obviously like masks and social distancing are a must and yeah again all of this is in the handbook um yeah do you have anything to add as far as um yeah i, I run the equipment center or the cage in the loop um, and so it's the same. You need a 24 hour in advance reservation via the patron portal to be able to check stuff out. And so there's 30 minute windows 
that you can choose. And you need to be there within that 30 minute window um, or the reservation will get canceled. And then you can't make another one until 24 hours. So it's important that you're in there for the 30 minutes. And um, so that, again, that that's, you know, to have as few people there at a time to keep the staff and everyone safe. Um, but uh, there is availability. Um, and something else that we didn't mention that you should do is there's the Campus Clear app that um, all students should download. And essentially, to come to campus at DePaul, you need to pass that um, app or whatever, pass that test every daily that says that you're good to go. So that's important to have that before you come in for a reservation. But um, we're on the phone. Um, you can call us. You can email us. Um, we're here to help. So if you, uh, you know, there's ways to get this done and we just want to make sure that it's done safe. Uh, also in the COVID safety plan, uh, some people might think it's something very complicated. It's not, uh, the checklist that the pool provided, uh, every student, essentially it's nice to have that checklist and not just read it and be like, I know that, but, uh, in the plan, you incorporate the checklist to your specific production, how that checklist reflect your locations, the crew members that you have. So read those and then tweak those to reflect how you're working with it. So you don't have to come up with any sort of different plan. You just have to incorporate that checklist to your own specific production, which is essentially take the same checklist and go over each point and just tell us how you're doing that in your film. And that's it. It's super simple. Uh, and other than that, uh, in the handbook, uh, some people might think, oh, I already signed that uh, when I took production one. Uh, I think Gary Novak said recently, like the revised production handbook, you have to sign it again. So just keep track of that. If you did already once uh, before, that's fine. You have to do it again this quarter. Um, and also the handbook is super helpful because um, like all the links and things that you need for these forms that we we've talked about um, and for like going through all this stuff, it's all linked in there. So it's like not only includes information, but also like has links to the other files you need. Um, this is also another important thing to note for when you're making reservations is that there are penalties and fines for like, unclaimed reservations, late returns, damages to the equipment, um, cleaning fees. It's important to take these seriously because they do impact like being able to reserve things in the future. Um, not only, and then as well, obviously, like you would have to pay a fine and that also is not ideal. Um, so, and then like, like Nick said too, like keeping in mind the COVID precautions, like, so like you have your equipment in the time that you need and showing up in the window that you are reserved for. Yeah, something about fines that happens uh, often is that, let's say you have your crew, right, for your production, and then your DP has a fine and he hasn't paid it, so that's going to hold up your production until that fine is paid. Uh, so just make sure that you're not holding up anybody uh, because you, like, have, like, $20 that you owe for, like, some, something late. So make sure you always pay those up because it's not even that much. That's a good point. Um, all right, and now into locations. So this is something else that the production office can help out on and also something important to keep in mind as you're going through pre-production for your project. Um, so first, as far as on-campus location protocols, um, you need to submit a student filming and photography permission form. It needs to be submitted to public safety a minimum of 72 hours in advance. So this form is linked in the production handbook. Um, and yeah, this is just to like let people on campus know what's going on. And then there are specific contacts as well for each DePaul property listed in the handbook. So whether you're in Lincoln Park or the Loop, there are different people to contact. And then even more specifically, like as far as which building you wanna be in, there'll be different people to contact. Um, so that's also important to note. So you are reaching out to the correct people as far as where you're going to be filming. There's also signage that you need to post to alert people that filming is in progress. You also, there's also um, specifics for if 
like the DePaul logo is being used in any way. Um, that's all in the handbook. And um, yeah, again, we, um, Nick said that you received a question too about like using the campus clear app, like when people are filming on campus. Um, I don't know if you wanna like go over that again. Sure. So yeah, the campus clear app, again, just any time you, uh, you come to campus, DePaul has asked that you fill out that questionnaire on that app. And essentially it's saying, um, if you're not well, or if you've been by people that are not well, they, they ask you to not, not come in. And so it's uh, to keep it safe. So you need to, to walk on campus, you need to clear that app. And this app is for, it's DePaul specific, right? So I guess if you have like an actor and you're coming on to DePaul's property, um, it would be, you should probably essentially create that app yourself by asking the actor or whoever it is, those questions. And if they don't clear it, um, you, you know, you shouldn't, operate and is saying that it's not safe to to you know come in and be by people so um yeah i mean they're they're, they're it's not a they're not like a trick you questions essentially um i think there's like eight to ten questions asking if you are, are sick or not feeling well or been by someone that has tested positive for covid um and if you have then it essentially says, you know, not, you're, you're not cleared to come back. Um, you could essentially try it tomorrow. And, um, you know, if you pass it, then you're, you're clear. Yeah. yeah, and then also just making sure that any of your crew that are DePaul students, they are like filling out that app before they get onto campus. Yeah, yeah. and as a producer to a, uh, to a project, um, I think it's it's very reasonable to require you know sh people show you a cleared app, um, you, you know, yeah. I think that's uh, I think that's probably what I would do if, um, if I was producing the film and just saying you know hey you have to clear this app before you come in or daily, and if they can't clear it then uh, you know you shouldn't be there. Um, but yeah, and then in addition to there being specific protocols for on-campus filming, there's um, also off-campus protocols for your locations that you want to film at. Um, so overall, it's important to remain professional in step representing the Pulse Film Program. Um, so you are like working with like people like who have these like locations or who are owners or like who are in charge of like a park or something so you want to make sure to maintain that um like to maintain your professionalism so when DePaul students in the future want to film there like there's a good reputation um and so a couple things to keep in mind for filming off campus that the production office can help you out with um is uh drafting a location use agreement so this is required to shoot on off-campus locations and it's basically it's a contract between the location you're shooting at and DePaul and this is submitted to the production office um, just to let them know that the location knows what's going on um that DePaul insurance and this whole location is provided by the production office um and definitely if you have any questions or you can through it, reach out to the production office i know some parts of it can be confusing as far as which part you're supposed to fill out or like the location different things like that um another thing that you might run into um, is the cert needing a certificate of insurance or a COI it's often referred to as so yeah like some locations might require this from DePaul basically it certifies that you're a DePaul student project and therefore covered by DePaul's insurance um, so this is something that you would present from DePaul to whichever location you're going to just like basically saying this I um, mean it's, it's easy to get and it's commonly needed for like Chicago film office permits as well as like Chicago parks permits um, and it's really easy to get from the production office uh, and yeah I don't know I, yeah <laughs> um, and then 
outside of this, you might also need a Chicago film office permit. Um, so this is like if you're shooting on a street or a sidewalk that would need to be blocked off, or maybe you need parking permits um, for your location, you can reach out to the Chicago film office and they have student rates. It's not super expensive. Um, and like I said, you can get parking permits, street block, streets blocked off for your production. And again, you'll need a COI to apply for this and also make sure to do this early. Um, it's really like there, there's a specific window. I don't necessarily remember what it is, but yeah, just making sure you're doing this early and you're working with the Chicago film office. If um, parking permits or streets being blocked off is something that you need. Yeah, I'd say timing wise, I would, uh, at least a week um, and if uh, I would give up more depending on what you need because a location use agreement is is simple right you just need a signature and, and uh, I would be one of the people that could potentially sign that um, and I would just ask questions about the uh, your, your plans there um, so that's easy to get but then if on top of that you need a certificate of insurance that could take a few days because we have to provide that completed location use agreement and give it to um, DePaul's insurance entity. And depending on whatever they have, that could take some time. Um, so yeah, the longer, the longer, um, or the more advanced you, you give us, the, uh, the better off for you. Um, so we will try to do it as quick as possible, but um, unfortunately, at times people have asked and said, hey, I have this thing in a couple of days and we haven't been able to, to take care of it. Sometimes it has and sometimes it hasn't. So, um, you know, do it as far in advance as you can. And if you have questions, ask us and, and we will, you know, we will do everything that we can to help things go. All right, so now into contracts. Um, so like you have your locations all figured out, you have the contracts for that, but now you wanna go through your, with your casting crew. Um, so there are specific protocols for union versus non-union cast, as well as working with minors. So um, SAG is like the, the Screen Actors Guild um, union and you can get a, um, a student film rate while working with them. So they do have to be paid more. Um, and this needs to get squared away before filming. So there's a specific form that you'll want to get from the production office in their commonly used forms, um, which is where the location use agreement and other all these other contracts are. Um, but it, it, there is a specific protocol for it. So just make sure to keep that in mind if you decide to work with union actors. Otherwise, non-union, um, there's just a contract and waiver available with the production office for them. Um, this is for... Um, there's like a non-student and student one. So let's say like it's a student non-union actor, you would use that. Otherwise, there's also a non-student um, non-union kind of uh, waiver and release. And then finally, working with minors has very specific guidelines um, and need, you need to abide by the Illinois child labor laws. Their, their parent and guardian needs to be present and the waiver needs to be signed by them. This is provided by the production office and also needs to be noted in your production packet, um, as we mentioned before. Um, can I say something about SAG? Mm -hmm. It works. So um, I know sometimes people are not, or maybe intimidated by extra paperwork and extra forms to fill out. Um, I guess I would encourage that um, to not be intimidated by that. It's, it's not that, it's not difficult. I'll say, um, SAG actors, um, being a student film gives you the opportunity that you can sign a contract with SAG actors that essentially says, um, you don't have to pay them any money if you don't make, if your film doesn't make any money. And then on top of that, it says, if you do end up making money, essentially all you have to do is pay that actor at the rate of $125 a day and then that's it. So that's what that contract is saying. And so obviously the actor would have to agree to that contract, but, um, but they do and, and they will, um, depending on the project and actor, right? So essentially the paperwork, all it involves is registering your project with SAG after 
And so that's, you know, they just want to, they want to see your script. They want to see your budget. They want to know just specifics of your production. And then they will deny it or approve it at that point and give you a number. And then essentially, once you have that number, you can then go cast um, union SAG actors. And um, I, it just greatly expands the, the amount of talent you can work with. Um, and, they, um, and then the other paperwork, essentially then there is one contract that you and each actor would sign and on your um and then daily when you come in it's like a time sheet that you would list all the sag actors what time and just kind of indicate what time they came in and what time they were they left um and then at the end of the production you turn in all that paperwork to sag and you keep it for yourself and and that's it i mean it's it's not a it is not a complicated process and um it's pretty pretty great that um you know that that contract's in place that you can actually work with some of these very talented actors um you know for no money you just gotta fill out the paperwork yep um and then on the other hand there's also crew contracts that you need to make sure everyone on your crew is signing um, so there's student and non-student release forms. Um, these are found on the commonly used forms again with the production office. Um, it like requires you to like detail some stuff about like what the product, what the project is, like what class it's for, different things like that. And then it just requires a signature from that crew member basically. Um, but just to keep in mind, the key crew positions of your project must be to Paul students. And if you plan to hire out any outside crew, you need to let the production office know in your production packet. And um, as far as like using, if you do receive like a DePaul grant um, through the School of Cinematic Arts, like you, there are specifics that you need to follow as if you're going to pay them with that money that you received from the school. Um, that's outlined in the handbook as well, but just like important to keep in mind if you are looking to hire anyone outside of DePaul. And yeah, this is just a reminder to keep your contracts. Super important as a producer. I recommend like a, a big like file folder or just some way to like have a place where you can like tuck them away with all the rest of your um, schoolwork or like other film projects just so you have a place, a like, safe place to keep them because it is required that you, I believe it's to five to 10 years somewhere in that range, you need to hold on to your contract for after your project um so yeah it's always important to keep those um just in case anything should come up later and just to keep like for your records as well yes we do have a question about the um crew release forms the depaul student release forms um I know at one point in time you did have to turn them into the production office do you still have to do that or do you just have to keep them you have to you have to turn them in as part of uh, just getting approved. Yes, all crew and cast release forms do do need to be turned in. Perfect, thank yeah, you. they do need to be to turn in uh, five p.m. the day prior to shoot is the deadline uh, to be insured in the production essentially. Great, thank you. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to touch as well. We talked about like some of the other facilities as far as reserving things um, that are available right now. Unfortunately, a lot of like the screening theaters and like places where you would like hold casting sessions or you would like possibly be filming um, are closed right now, but there are still like theater labs and different things open that um, like you might see as like you're going through the patron portal, things like that. Just wanted to um, point that out, but it's also all mentioned in the handbook. Um, yeah, just a reminder to stay safe and stay healthy. And if you need any help, definitely reach out to the production office. It, even if it's just a tiny question, like there are no like dumb questions when it comes to doing this. Every project is different. Every project has its own like challenges and so it's always important to stay ahead of those and 
um, reach out when you need it. Um, and yeah, I just listed some helpful resources. SCA Central is that page on U2L. The production handbook is there. Um, I was also notified that there would be a slightly re revised version coming out next week. Um, so make sure to look out for that, make sure to read through it. And the production office webpage has all those forms that you need. It talks about the um, theater school casting calls, all of that important information. Also the Cinespace webpage has like things about the grip truck and equipment reservations and certifications. And then I also included the Chicago Film Office, specifically the student films webpage and that goes over anything you need to know about those parking permits or blocking off streets um, and included are all of the contact emails. Um, yeah, that's the end of this presentation. I don't know if you have anything else you wanna add quick, but it's kind of a lot, but I feel like overall the moral of the story is email the production office if you have any questions. I think that's right. I think you did a really good job, Jacqueline, putting that together. And explaining it thanks awesome yeah amazing well thank you all so much for being here if there's anything else you want to add fran if there's anything you want to throw in there feel free uh i guess uh i, I forgot to mention your colleagues your COVID safety officer could be your ad in a small mm -hmm. production some people might have dual roles and a bigger production is more like that's just your role uh ideally it wouldn't be your director or producer because we would they're kind of biased, right, for the uh, for the project. So somebody whose role is to keep people safe, it will be better to also have that role, essentially. Good to know. That's definitely really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much. I There aren't any kind of follow-up questions at the end here. Um, Jacqueline, I think, like what you said, if anyone's confused or has any questions, I know the people at the PO, Fran, I'm sure you're great. I know like Will Ackerman was fantastic. Nick, I know you chime in if there's questions that the students can't answer. Um, the PO is great, especially if you're new and don't really know what you're doing. Um, I will, so we had talked about earlier in this, uh, someone had asked about the dogs. Yeah. And I kind of gave an answer um, that I think is right. So I'm, I'm going to look into that. I'm going to ask that question and I'll reach out to uh, Jacqueline, you and Leah and yeah. just tell you what they officially say. And then if it's different than what I had suggested, uh, you know, we can let people know that. Awesome. Definitely. Yeah, I know uh, I in production one used my goldfish and I'm like, is that against the rules now? <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, in a conversation that I was uh, present for, yeah, that question came up in a goldfish, and it was kind of like, no, no, you can't. <laughs> hey, yeah. if, if that's the answer, that's the answer. Yeah, so, um, but I, let, yeah, I guess it's, uh, unfortunately, I am a little bit unclear. That doesn't mean the rule's unclear, but it, uh, I mean, it clearly says no. Right. But um, I'll, I'll ask those questions, you know, because it's like, why, you know, does it mean, you know, can can your dog literally not be on screen? Right. <laughs> or can I not have my dog swimming in a lake? Yeah. Like, yeah. where's the line? Yeah. So let me, um, let me try to get um, some more information on that and I'll, I'll report back. Yeah, definitely. And I am just kind of curious, just my own personal question. Um, I know that like the PO and SEA has released COVID safety protocols now. I guess how how much are you promoting film students still be shooting right now? Like what would what would you say, just like from a professional opinion, would you say kind of lean off for a little bit, just shoot with the, you know, the people you live with, small crews, kind of like where do you stand? Sure. Um I don't want to discourage anything. Um, I think what seems to be happening is people aren't shooting as much, mm -hmm. um, but people are shooting and essentially it's, it's if you can do it safely and I would keep, I mean, I think it goes, I mean, I think it's obvious that you fewer people is better, right? Yeah. Keeping your circle tighter. Um, and then I think if you're going to do that, you just need to, really think about everyone's safety and, and where you are before that. Um, and if people are comfortable, there is a way to do this safely, right? 
And um, I think it's just very important that those are the steps that are taken. Um, you know, is it that different than what we've done in the past? Yeah. Um, but I, and could that discourage people? Y yes, but um, it doesn't need to do, I mean, you can do things. Mm -hmm. There's equipment available, but I also understand, um, you know, that doesn't go for everybody. You know, some people that might be more compromised, you know, that it's maybe not an option. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't want to discourage anything or really have a recommendation, I guess. But um, I mean, I think there's ways to do it safely and that's what needs to happen. Um, and, you know, we can, we can help with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know like there is a little bit of equipment available to rent right now, um, but I have kind of heard that it's really only for class projects or is the PO approving any independent projects or is it strictly class projects right um, now? We would, we would, prove, um, we have, um, I, Brand maybe four, five, six. Mm. Yeah, we did uh, four independent projects and one thesis recently. So okay. yeah, so yeah, so not um, you know we would get sometimes that in a week. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean people are doing it, and the ones that are doing it um, are doing it safely. Um, for instance, um, I don't want to give away anything or I won't say names, but like there was a project that was kind of written around COVID and they actually, mm. everybody in the film wore masks. That's smart. And so it was, yeah, it was a way that, uh, okay, it's like, well, we can keep safe doing this and here's a story and, and um, you know, they were, people were safe. Um, so, you know, it, it uh, I think you just, I don't know. You, yeah, you just gotta be, um, I guess, creative. Yeah, you gotta get creative. It's it's yeah. new times. Yeah. So, and again, I mean, that's what we're here for. And and the more advanced, you know, I mean, if if you just want to use the production office as a way to, I don't know, just spit all things with us, and, mm -hmm. and we can we can help do that too. Um, so yeah. Um, this will be over soon, right? God, I hope so. <laughs> Ready to get back into it. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and being here. Yeah. I I found it very informative. Um, and we, we didn't have a huge YouTube audience, but uh, we had a big Instagram audience. That's where most of our questions were coming from. So, all right. Awesome. Well, at least it'll be there for a resource for later too, if people want to watch. Yeah, definitely. I've heard um, we've had Martha McGee on a couple times, and she teaches scheduling and budgeting, and she said that she's going to use these videos in in her lectures moving forward, Great. which is cool.